Hello everyone, welcome to Rose and Carter Do the J-O-B. It's Friday, it's Tag Team Day, and it's Bully Boy Carter's Tag Team Choice of Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka, a.k.a. the Orient Express. Good team, right, Bully Boy? One of my favourites, to be honest. <clears throat> Favourite match, got to be the Rockers from Royal Rumble 91. It's up there, definitely up there with the best of them. To be honest, yeah, yeah. and uh, with a new foundation, Royal Rumble '92 as well was one of the best as well. To be fair, right, yeah. Mm. To, to say that the the new foundation is the best of anything is, is like a fucking good team, but it's not often a team that people remember as as being the best of anything, is it? No, because uh, they weren't really around for that long, were they? Well, like eight, not even no, eight years. No. So, like, didn't really get a chance, did they? No, so, but they were they were fantastic on their day. So Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka, they worked together in Continental in '86, and they both teamed with Jeff Jarrett apparently. Um, oh, did they? But they weren't together as a team till late in '86 uh, in CWA Continental. They won the international tag championships from Sato and Tarzan Goto or something. But it's odd that they won it from Sato, who would be in later on in the Orient Express. I thought that was pretty cool. All oh, right, okay. I didn't know. Lost it in '87 to the Sheep Herders. Uh, and wrestled Bill Dundee and Rocky Johnson and the Nasty Boys in two other feuds there. Uh, 88 to 90 in the AWA. That's when Diamond Dallas Page came in. That's when they first met the Rockers. Feuded with right. Chavo and Mondo, which I have seen bits of. Their matches are fucking really good. And the Olympians, Brad Reagans and Ken Patera, who uh, Brad Reagans is pretty fucking dull, but I quite like Ken Patera. Uh, yeah. 90 to 92 was the Orient Express kind of main run, originally with Sato, obviously, Sato, Sato, whatever you want. I think fucking, I, li- I like Al Hayes' commentary when he calls Kato, Carto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always fucking pop for that. Um, yeah. uh, Paul Diamond was already there, but when Kato went, uh, sorry, Sato went home to Japan, he was like the ideal man to replace him due to the fucking history that they had as bad company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it all came about, apparently. I, I watched a shoot interview of, of Paul Diamond's, and it all came about because when Sato went home, uh, it was like done on the quick. And Paul Diamond, just as Paul Diamond, replaced him in the Orient Express team. So just as himself. And that was when right. the whole fucking mad thing came about after that. Uh, Sato came back in 91 briefly and made a six-man team, which I didn't know about until I researched more. Uh, 93 to 94, they were in ECW, Wrestling Public Enemy, uh, The Rottens, Taz and fucking Kevin Sullivan. Uh, oh, okay. 94, they were in WCW, mm-hmm. where Kato looked exactly the same as Kato, but he was called Hato, H-A-I-T-O. There we go. All right, okay. Um, and then they did some, like, reunion stuff in 2006, 7 and 8, which I didn't know about until this as well. So, uh, here's a fucking funny one. Really good team, right? In 2003... Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine brought out a top 100 tag teams of all time, and they were only 99. That's weird, isn't it? Isn't it? That's pretty fucking wank, I thought. But like, right, good team. I put them <laughs> I fucking, certainly like. I put them in the top 20 in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd love to. I'd love to have a look at the rest of the list to be fair and see some of the other yeah. shite that the fucking Rock and Sock connection will be like number four. There's been a lot of great teams, and 90 fucking nine is a bit shit to be fair. Like. Yeah. You know, you know they're going to have like the Dudley Boys as number two. Probably, yeah, yeah. And I'd put them at probably like 38 or something, but. I'd put them at fucking 709. <laughs> so we watched, we watched four matches apiece. What was your first? My first match was against the Rockers, and it was from AWA from the 19th of March. Nine, uh, I've put 98, but that'll be fucking 88. I've obviously read that wrong, but yeah. 
um, yeah, it was a <clears throat> an AWA. It was the tag title match, and it was a really good match. Actually, I put fucking <laughs> there's. I've seen a lot of the matches with the Rockers and Orient Express from like the nineties, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna watch one from the AWA. So it's like quite rare, you know, something that I'm not too familiar with, and a uh, fucking brilliant match. The uh, <clears throat> trying just to read them more my notes right now um the actual finish of the match was a finish that was so well done and so rare as well like marty was on the outside of the ring and they just throw him into the post it's like diamond throws him into the post or they both throw him into the post diamond rolls him in the ring while on the outside michaels and tanaka i think are fighting but Diamond rolls in and gets a three count. So it's during the hot tag. It's literally during the fucking the hot tag of the match. And you're you're expecting a lot more, you know what I mean? But um they roll him in and they get the fucking three count there and then. So it was like a real surprising type of uh, finish. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like so it's gonna be right Bob on there as well, isn't it? You are. The timing will have to be right there as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you can get out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and it, the fucking... The whole thing was, like, beautifully done as well. And I was expecting it to be fucking, like, a near fall. But it just, like, ended, like, there and then. And I was, like, pretty good going that. But um, there was also a spot in it where... Which I really thought was pretty cool. Um, Sean... Trying to think where we are. Uh, where are we? Um... Uh, there's a point where I think Tanaka gets the blind tag and Diamond, like, he's running. Sean leaps as Diamond's running and Diamond hits Tanaka. So they, like, literally, like, you know, collide into each other. So, like, yeah. it's almost like they do the blind tag to trick Michaels, but then they end up looking like dickheads because they collide into each other, you know what I mean? So the blind tag didn't really work in the long run. Kind of thing, which was a pretty yeah. cool spot. Um, That's something I could see the Midnight Express doing. Yeah, for a, a, a probably like a real yeah, a pretty accurate spot. Probably like the, the the Midnights and the Rock and Rolls would do. To be fair, yeah. And I think during the Rockers' early days, a lot of their stuff was very similar to the Rock and Roll Express. To be honest, but um, yeah, they were, they were to start with. They were kind of like the fucking. B show rock and rolls anyway, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. But like, obviously, like back in the day when I used to watch the rockers, I'd never heard of the uh, like the uh, Rock and Roll Express because yeah, they weren't obviously like, like in the fucking WWF the way the rockers were. So like, I always watched the rockers, and I never really knew about the Rock and Roll Express till about probably ten years later. But now it's like fucking hell. But like back then, I didn't know. So the rockers, I'm watching them. About the Rockers were so good though, like they were such a good team, like you know they really were. But um, now I've just put the fucking uh, after the finish, the fans were chant. That's what one thing I did realize: the fans were chanting when when Janetti got counted out and I got pinned after being thrown into the ring post. Those fans were all chanting like bullshit, and it's kind of funny because oh. it's kind of funny watching it back, like thinking that they were chanting it because they cared. They weren't chanting it because this is wank. Like, you know what I mean? They, they, they yeah, were they weren't because... ECW chanting it. They were fucking... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, they yeah. Like they weren't chanting in... it. Yeah, they weren't fucking marks chanting this is bullshit. Yeah. They were literally chanting they were it. Because... pissed off their heroes lost. Yeah. Yeah, and you yeah, could that's tell. that's acceptable bullshit, isn't it? That's, that's acceptable bullshit chanting. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. And um, Michael's done a promo after the match and Jeanette was... It was all fucking busted open. It was beautiful. Like the fans were fucking ready to riot, to be honest. But no, fantastic match. Absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Wicked. Yeah. Uh, my first one was from a few months later, 19th of September, 88. Um, it was from Memphis, but it was still kind of AWA. It was for the AWA tag belts, but like Memphis and AWA kind of like did shit together around this period. Right, okay. Drawn to it because it was two heel teams, 
Um, so I didn't know which way it was going to go until I sort of watched it. So it was Pat Tanaka and, and Paul Diamond, the AWA tag champions with Diamond Dallas Page against the RPMs. It was Mike Davis and Tommy Lane. Um, okay. Who had downtown Bruno with them, Harvey Whippleman. Um, from Memphis, Jerry Calhoun, the Memphis referee, was, was refing. Uh, it started out with Pat Tanaka and Paul Diamond being right over, like baby face over, because Diamond Dallas Page announced them to the ring. And he had like two birds with him. So it was like uh, they were over because of the women, I think. Um, right, okay. Uh, fucking Pat Tanaka got hammered in the early, you know, first part, like proper taking big bumps and putting the other two over real well. Um, so they were like, obviously the early villains. Uh, Pat gets backdropped like through the fucking roof and like bumps his asshole off like really well for him all the way through. Um, right, yeah, yeah. At, some, at one point, Pat misses a crossbody, another fucking massive bump. Uh, Paul does the knee to the back Paul Diamond. Right, so yeah. now, now they're the heels. Like it's really odd because they're fucking the fickle fans, right? They were like they were all for Pat Tanaka. Paul Diamond does a knee to the back. Now they're booing them. It was it was quite right. an odd thing to watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fucking Davis goes out the ring. Pat goes out and fucking batters him outside the ring. Uh, then it's Bad Company's heel time now, so they're getting the fucking heat in. Uh, Paul leaps over Pat's back. I love that spot when when uh, sort of Pat's got him on the ropes hanging in and then Paul leaps over the top. I love that. Or I've seen it yeah, the other yeah. way around. Pat does the leap. Uh, the finish, all four of them are in. There's an abdominal stretch on uh, on Paul Diamond and then Pat Tanaka kicks the RPM dude right in the chops and he sort of like rolls him up from that. Uh then there's a brawl afterwards, after the fucking win. And then Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka like powder and the RPMs are in the ring, all baby face. So like it was RPMs heel to start with and then RPMs baby face at the end. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the RPM stayed villain forever after. It was right good action wise, but it was just fucking confusing as to who you meant to cheer for. You know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I enjoyed it. It's like the RPMs as well. They were massive in Puerto Rico and Continental and shit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Your next one. My ne next one is from this one's not got a month or a date on it, but it's just got like 91. Okay. And it's against the Heart Foundation, the WF. Right, yeah. um, I've never seen this match before and I'm surprised I never had, but um trying to think. It was a fun match. It was a good match. Anvil and Tanaka start. Tanaka basically gets tackled by An the Anvil. Tanaka cuts him off, tags in Kato, hip tossed by the Anvil. Breton, they do some shines on Kato and stuff. Um, there's a spot where they take over on Brett, where they they done this spot, the Royal Rumble 92, which would have been after this, where fucking Fuji hangs a cane in the corner. And Owen runs into it. Oh, yeah. Just snaps yeah. it, like. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brett done it. I don't know if it was men to look as fucking shit as it did. But Brett reverses a whip. No. Brett gets a whip reverse. Brett ends up going into it. It doesn't snap. Like the cane fucking... It still looks good because he took the fucking cane in the corner. But it doesn't, like, snap the way it does with Owen. And they start the heat on Brett. But it's quite a short match. So, fucking... The whole heat on fucking Brett doesn't really last that long. It's only like a five-minute match, to be fair. Um, the, the finish, I really like the finish, though. Um, they do the double down. Um, and then fucking Tanaka, like, fucking Kato's got Brett, like, in a fucking full Nelson. Brett moves, fucking... Tanaka ends up super kicking Kato out of the ring and then it leaves Brett in Tanaka. Brett hits the backbreaker and then fucking Tanaka is on the floor and then Anvil either do the thing where fucking Brett's on the corner celebrating, like in the corner, 
and then Anvil goes behind him and literally scoops him up and gives him like almost like a 180, but like backwards, you know what I mean? So Brett does the almost like a moonsault, yeah. you know what I mean? It like splashes him. Yeah, yeah, but with Anvil's assistance, because I don't think Brett could have done that shit on his own. So like fucking, yeah, and that's the, literally the finish of the match. So it's like a splash from Brett, but Anvil fucking assisting him on the way. But it was a good match. It was only like five minutes long, but it was a fucking. It was almost a squash match, to be fair. And it was it was ninety one. I don't know what month it was, but I was happy with the match. I thought it was decent, but um, I don't know what year it was. I thought it could have been a bit, bit more of a fucking level, you know, like fucking even match. But um, it was mainly ninety percent Heart Foundation, to be honest. But that was good. I, I, it was right. I've seen. I've seen Brett and Cato in singles matches, only like, you know, TV kind of enhancement kind yeah. of matches, but they're always good ones, aren't they? Brett and Co- uh, yeah, Cato. I've seen, yeah, I've seen them as well. Like, I think Cato was fucking fantastic, to be honest. I've watched both, I've watched their singles matches many times and thought they're always fucking worth watching, like, you know, decent. Yeah. I, I, think, I think they've both got a shit end of the deal. Like, even after the team, you know, like, Paul Diamond did the Max Moon thing and stuff, and Kato yeah. was just, uh, sorry, Tanaka was just kind of, you know, pushed down to fucking enhancement, which is, it's just not right. You know, that there's so much more they could have done with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, stick them in another gimmick or fucking, you know, change the team or just have them as bad company. They could have done all right there, I think. Well, oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, my next one was 91 as well, January the 5th on Superstars. This one was a squash, but I was drawn to it because they were against the Mulkey brothers, uh, Bill and Tony Mulkey. Oh, I, I fucking love them. Watch that one. I fucking love the Mulkeys. Uh, you know, to this day, they're selling Mulkey Mania t shirts because of right, yeah. how fucking big they became in the NWA. And my mate George South kind of helped them along the way because it was them that they beat on TV, George South as the gladiator and his teammate. Um, Roddy Piper, Honky Tonk Man and Vince doing commentary is fucking hilarious. Uh, Kato starts with Bill. It's just, they, they just batter them, but I wanted to see what they did during the battering, if you know what I mean, like how they, yeah, yeah. How, how they express, sort of get themselves over. And it's right good. The fucking, you know, the Mulkies are bumping wild well for them, sleeping and leaping to fuck. Uh, the Mulkies are, are keeping up real well. Um, the, there's a Rockers promo midway through, which kind of puts over the fact that they're wrestling the Orient Express to the Rumble, which was just a couple of weeks from this. Um, Kato's yeah. fucking drop kick is high as fuck, isn't it? It's like proper Jim Brunzel high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The finish is fucking... Uh, Pat Tanaka has one of the Mulkies in like a waist lock from behind. Kato yeah. kicks him in the face and then Pat Germans him and like bridges for the finish. Oh, so yeah, it's like yeah. I've quite good finish. One of my late matches, yeah. Uh, Fuji's right happy. It's, a, it's really good. It gets him over well. Um and the Malkies, as they always do, looked amazing on television. Little pale yeah. fucking pasty bodies. Love them. Oh. What you got now? Match number three. I've got the Orient Express from the 20th of January, 91, against two people I've never, ever heard the names of, Terry Davis and Cliff Sheets. Cliff uh, Sheets? That's an amazing <laughs> name. I've never I don't know if you've ever heard of the fuckers but I thought I'd put them on and I'll tell you what this is what I've noticed the second guy like the first guy I don't know who the fuck he was because Monsoon and Heenan seemed to not no who the fuck was it yeah it was Heenan and Gorilla didn't know they didn't give a fuck they they literally didn't talk about the people they were wrestling so didn't know who was who but what I will say is the fucking the second guy was fucking bumping brilliantly. I don't know who it was. If it was Davis or Sheets, I have no idea. But the sec- I've put the second guy takes right good bump after Tanaka catches his foot and then gives him the fucking roundhouse sweep to the leg. You know what I mean? Catch the foot and then like yeah. a fucking... Yeah. 
brilliant bump. And I put later on in the fucking notes as well, he was bumping brilliantly. So I don't know if who the fuck he was, but the second guy that was in was bumping brilliantly. Um, but it was generally an Orient Express fucking squash, and they'd done that same finish that you just mentioned with a super kick and the German. Um, yeah, it's a good finish, isn't it? Oh, it was a beautiful finish. Beautiful. Uh, um, making, yeah, I've just, just put the Orient Express really strong going into the, the Royal Rumble with the Rockers, but um, it was all Orient Express. But like I say, the first guy looked a bit fucking sh- shoddy, to be fair, but whoever the fucking second guy was, I noticed his bumping was fucking, he, he looked like shit, but his bumping was brilliant. You know what I mean? And it was weird, like, as shit as he Would looked, you book it? Fucking, you are? Would you book him? Oh, I'd, but I'll, I'll make some calls tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get Cliff Sheets in. I hope it's Cliff Sheets. To be fair, because I like that I name. Because he's got the better name. Yeah, I mean, Terry even if it's David, the other one, we'll, we'll, we'll book one. him and call him Cliff Sheets. You are. If it, even if it's the other fellow, we'll call. We'll book him and still call him Cliff Sheets. Yeah, why not? I, it's marketable anyway. Yeah. Right. You could sell like paper. You could sell fucking Cliff Sheets toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we we'll do that fucker. It's a money maker, that is. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, my uh, second, third one was a six man with all three of the Orient oh, right. Express. Against the Bulldog, Ricky Steamboat, and Kerry Von Eric. Yeah, I was going to do that one as well. I've seen that, but I thought, fuck it, I'll leave that one out. I think it's the only six man I've ever seen him in. But it was from the Summer Sam Spectacular, like, you know, the, the show that the lead. Fucking um, Tom. Tom shared that match once, didn't he, on Facebook? Tom, fucking Thomas J. Curtis. He shared it on Facebook, didn't he? Because I'm sure. I'm oh, sure, like about a year ago, maybe. Right. Yeah, I've never seen 18... a six man before. No, no, that's why I was drawn to it, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're pretty standard star. You know, Orient Express were just there to put the other team over, let's be fair. Basically. Um, it's the only yeah. time I've seen Sato in the baggies as well. Like when he was in the Orient Express before, he was in the red tights, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But he's in the baggies now, the same as Pat and uh, and Kato. Uh, right. At one point, Kato distracts Davy Boy, uh, which gets the cut off after like a few hot fucking rocker styly tags on the babyface team. Uh, oh, yeah. Davy Boy <laughs> and the Dragon here are fast as fuck. Every time Kerry gets in the ring, he just kind of. Puts a hold on and <laughs> just kind of waits there. He's the fucking me of the team. Um, so the heat is got on Kerry just to kind of give him some kind of action, I suppose. Um, yeah, yeah. Then later on, they're getting heat on Ricky Steamboat, which makes sense because he's the best fucking seller ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, already Express are doing the old fucking drawing the baby face in for the fucking ref to go over but Kerry takes it way too far he must be smashed he's got no fucking idea what's going on because when he comes in <laughs> he is actually legit fucking going to the corner and battering him or outside the ring going round to the corner and fucking causing fucking issues and yeah. and it just kind of kills fucking momentum that the Orient Express might have had like psychologies I'll <laughs> put Kerry master of psychology <laughs> in fucking massive letters um, <laughs> Steamboat Salin is amazing. Uh, Pat loves those fucking sidekicks, don't he? Pat Tanaka, that he does oh, right yeah. well. Yeah. Some on the door. Uh, there's a neck breaker to Pat. Fucking hot tag. In comes Kato. In comes Davy Boy. Uh, there's a right good leapfrog and a fucking kick. And then there's another hot tag. Um, so it's like it's always up there. Bulldog comes in yeah. and batters. He power slams Kato. Kerry comes in and claws Pat. Then there's a crossbody from the dragon on Kato, and job's done. Sato doesn't really have a lot to do with it. I don't know whether he's foxed or what, but 
Um, it doesn't really have involved, but it's mainly Pat and Kato. Uh, yeah. Yeah, really good. It had a bit of everything in it. So, yeah, it, it got the fucking the, the babyface team over who were going into the SummerSlam against... Uh, were they all, they were uh, they were wrestling Warlord and Power and Glory were they at that SummerSlam ninety one? Uh, I think, I think so, it yeah. was anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was a good one. I, I'm glad I picked it because the next no, one cool. I picked was a fucking mistake. So your last. Uh, my last one is against the LOD. Twelfth uh, of May ninety one wrestling challenge. Um, the first thing I noticed was Orient Express wearing fucking black. They usually wear red. Now I'm thinking they're yeah. fucking LOD wear red, don't they? So they probably fucking totally switched up just because LOD were in red. Because I've never seen Orient Makes Express sense. wear black ever. In fairness, in the six man, they had black on. Did they? Because these were yeah. like these outfits were totally fucking different to what I'd ever seen. To be fair. Um. It was a weird match because, like, they give the knee to the back, the old fucking knee to the back for the cutoff on Hawk. Um, it's all LOD. Literally, like, the whole match is LOD. Little bits of Orient Express here and there, but generally, massive double backdrop on Tanaka fucking almost ends up in fucking Japan or something. Loves a backdrop, Tony. Loves a backdrop. Oh, he fucking does. And he's, he's very good at it, but fuck me. I'm watching it thinking, oh, like, he literally. He fucking flew like literally like different continent literally fucking flew for <laughs> like a while not coming like, down. you are <laughs> like he was not coming down exactly yeah yeah i was sort of fucking hell like looks so good yeah great backdrop on tanaka and then literally not long after that they gave the fucking doomsday device to kato for the finish i put like, the match was okay it was good it was an all right match it wasn't probably the worst match of the four that I watched, I think, but um, it's still, you know, not not really like anything I'm wrong with it. Fan. I wouldn't have watched it anyway. You are? I'm controversially not an LOD fan. Well, I'm not either, like, because I think realistically, if I was to tell you that I think LOD are the most influential tag team of all time, in my opinion, they really are because they, of what they've done and what they what they accomplished but i think realistically work like work wise demolition were a lot better like a hell of a lot better 100 um lod were more of a fucking they were more of a trendsetter weren't they 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 set that yeah. fucking yeah you know and that's what they've done so, so like most goldberg people, have tagged yeah and most people look at them as thinking they were the fucker. They were the the deal, like the, the team you need to look look up to. And and I can't like fault that because realistically, the the LOD were the fucking. They were the team to be. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. the Road Warrior pop of the eighties was for that reason. They were that popular, but wrestling wise and match wise, they weren't. They weren't on the Midnight Express level or the fucking demolition level. You know what I mean? But they were good for three or four minutes. You are? They were good for three or four minutes, anything after that. Yeah. You know, that's my opinion. You know I mean? yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I love the LOD, but, but match wise, they just weren't, you know what I mean? They, they didn't do it for me the way fucking Demolition did. Because I could watch I could watch Demolition all night long. LOD, not yeah. so much. But, you know, that's just my opinion on the matter. You know? I'm with you. Um, my last one I fucked up on, so I actually watched two more, right? And it turns out I fucked the second one up as well. So right. It was a fucking disaster. <laughs> my my second two, right? The first one that I watched lastly was from '93, like after they like technically weren't even a fucking team. Um, because well, uh, Kato was Max Moon by then '93, but oh yeah, the US. USWA and WWF were in like a feud so WWF had sent people to USWA like you know often the lesser known people but you know they still sent good people Razor and Papa Chongo and Owen and fucking Ahmed yeah. Johnson and Steve. you know they sent some good people but they obviously wanted a tag team to wrestle for the US titles 
against Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett. So they sent Orin Express, established team. Um, yeah, so yeah. what I thought was a match, you know, it was like a six minute video. So I thought, oh, this will be a good one from Mid South Coliseum, blah, blah, blah. Um, it was mostly Jerry Lawler just at the microphone talking about it and then a 30 second fucking clip of the match. So I was yeah. a bit pissed about that, to be fair. Um, it literally just showed you the finish, which was like a fucking, you know, Kato and Tanaka run together, double pin. Uh, lovely jubbly. It was nice to hear about it, though. So I thought, all right, I'll have another another go. So I went to 2006 when they did their reunion. Uh, okay. Blue Water Championship Wrestling in Michigan. Orient Express reunion. I did check the comments on there. and It was definitely, you know, it was the original Kato. You know, I'm assured of this, that it was definitely fucking Paul Diamond. It was definitely yeah. Pat Tanaka, but um, yeah. against a team called Sugar and Spice, who looked like right good and, you know, were doing some right good tag team moves as well. You know, clearly a Midnight Express sort of Southern Boys fan, uh, these yeah. two. Right good wrestling. And then, uh, you know, Pat Tanaka's fucking bumping right well for them. Uh, yeah. Kato's not doing so much, to be fair, but Tanaka's bumping right well for him. Um, yeah. uh, I've written uh, uh, this Sugar and Spice team do the fucking drop toe old elbow thing like the Midnight Express used to do, like Bobby Eaton used to do the elbow. Right, um, yeah. Pat's still bumping like a bitch. And then it stops. There's no fucking finish. So I had a 30-second highlight video and a six-minute match in the first one that I thought was going to be a bouter. This one is, like, seven minutes long. Right good match. Like, really enjoying it. Like, only, like, a camcorder sort of footage thing from some indie oh. show. A well-attended indie show, bear in mind. Um, and then that just stops. But what, I'm, what I could make out was... Um, Lola and Jeff Jarrett were right over as USWA tag champions. And... yeah. Pat Tanaka still bumped real well in 2006, but I still don't know the actual fucking finish. But I did look it up. On the Wikipedia, it says that they did uh, a Blue Water Championship wrestling show in 2006, which would have been this one. And Wik Wikipedia told me that they lost. So right, okay. uh, the last thing that I saw <laughs> was a drop toe old from uh, Sugar and Spice. So I'm saying Pat Tanaka lost to a drop toe old. In your <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Uh, Sounds but, a bit yeah. accurate. Long and short of it, Orient Express <laughs> are really fucking good, and you you can never. They're not the 99th out of 100. They're way better than that. So PWI, I love PWI magazine, but they got it fucking wrong there. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Monday is Butch Reed, your pick of singles wrestler. Right, looking forward to that. Wednesday, yeah, that that. Wednesday is the Invasion, invasion. 2001 pay-per-view, yeah. which I really like. Uh, like yeah. the last new period of what I enjoy. Uh, my tag pick for next week, it's my pick, isn't it? Um, yeah. It's one of my guilty pleasures of tag teams. They were called too much to start with, but too cool in the end. Scotty Let's too hot Grandmaster Sexy. That's a good to be fair because they're both fucking really great. fucking like. I've had a, I've had a look back through some of the matches that I could could possibly watch. I've put too much in as well from when before they were like you know before the garbles yeah, and yeah. the baggies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, too much and too cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right looking forward to having a browse through some of them bad boys because they were villains to start with, weren't they? When they were too much, they were, and they. Can you remember Survivor Series? It was them and Crash, Holly, and Bob Holly against yes. Edge, Christian, and Hardy. And the, no. it was like the Hardys and Christian Edge were the faces. But I remember watching that match, and a lot of the fans were fucking treating too cool. And Bob Holly and Crash as the faces. And I think it was yeah. that point on they kind of changed. I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was around about that time. Because, like you say, they started as heels, but like they started being liked. I'm sure I remember it was around about seeing, that time, to be fair. I remember seeing WWF live in Birmingham, and the first match was like this cruiserweight kind of battle royal thing, and I've never right, yeah. heard a fucking pop like the one that Scotty to what he got. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking spine-tinglingly loud. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and and that's why. I've done a show with Scotty to White in Kidderminster as well, and he was really cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, and and Brian, I've always liked Memphis Boy, so I'm bound to. So yeah, that, that's yeah, next yeah, Friday. Yeah. But Butch Reed is next on Monday, so we'll see everyone for Butch Reed. Yeah. 